I've been having an absolute blast with Outpost Infinity Siege, so much so I've learned a lot over the last 25 hours to get my base up to scratch, my weapon in a strong place, and my farming needs fulfilled. In this video I'll be going over my top 5 tips for the game to help get you started and learn from my past mistakes. But before we get started though, a massive thank you to Lightning Games for not only providing myself a copy of the game, but also for the early access, giving me huge insights into the game and making this video possible. And if you want to see more videos and guides for Outpost Infinity Siege, then you're in the right location for it, so dropping that like and subscribe will really help to be able to find your way back to that channel. But you're here for tips, and I've got them, so let's get to it. So let's kick it all off with one I learned pretty early on and in the hard way. Ammo is particularly scarce in the early hours of this game, especially with the type of Zen gun that you're given and little to no mods to try and reduce it down. At default your initial gun is single fire and costs 15 ammo out of your magazine of a 180 to fire and deal some damage, or alternatively swap into your alt fire or cost you a whopping 30 ammo for that shot. Now as you can imagine this means a total of 12 shots per reload for your main damage dealer or 6 total with the alt fire. This is a lot of ammo to start chewing your way through especially with the amount of enemies that the game will spawn your way with little to no help from your outpost DPS wise. Now even in the tutorial I found that I ran out of ammo quite often requiring me to generate an ammo tin to replenish constantly or for me to use the unlimited ammo skill that Faye has to be able to keep the lead firing. Fortunately, as you start to get into the main parts of the game, it does reward you with Zen boosters that offer reductions to ammo cost, or maybe even increases to the cost of more damage, or wider spreads of it being applied, but for the early game, you're very reliant on that ammo generator, something that your automatic turrets are also fond of using up, requiring you to make a decision about which is more important, your weapon or the base defences. Now of course this decision is something that you need to make on the fly as turrets being reloaded can be more influential and useful than just getting a couple of shots out of your main gun. In the tutorial we get to see this in great effect as the MG turrets hold 1000 total ammo and can be reloaded with a single normal ammo tin. Now each shot of the turret does cost 2 ammo meaning that an MG turret with a full reload can shoot 500 to total times before it then goes down again. Now with the scorpion robots in the tutorial it takes around about 6 shots from the turret to start getting that kill, giving us a total of 12 ammo to kill that enemy. Now on the other side an ammo tin will give you 2 stacks of 500 ammo, totalling the exact same amount of 1000 that the turret would have received. With no zen modifiers and on the exact same mission this was 10 ammo per shot, and requires between 6 to 10 shots depending on the distance to the target. With a minimum of 60 ammo per kill, the MG turrets could have killed 5 targets for the exact same cost as it would have took you to be able to kill 1. Now this isn't to say that we shouldn't have a stockpile of ammo on our person, as we will need to be able to do the roaming and even take on priority targets, for which we'll need that ammo to be able to do so. It's more just to highlight that early days turrets are stronger than your base versions of your Zen gun, so always use your ammo tins on them in the first instance, and then look to be able to fill yourself up after they've been taken care of. With tours being the main bread and butter of the game, at least outside of endless mode and for farming resources, you're going to need to learn energy management and ways to be able to get more to increase your stock. In the transportation phase, you're going to need energy to relocate into new areas to search out new materials ready for the extract and final exfil. Now each type of location costs differently to be able to visit, with landmarks being the most expensive but also having some of the best loot on offer if you can actually find it. Now effective planning of your loot route is crucial to having a profitable tour and even finding rare items like legendaries or new blueprints for items to construct. Now each move will drain your energy resource until eventually you won't have enough to be able to move and will then need to be able to do that final extract leading to another tour under your belt. On top of moving during a tour though, energy is used for functions out and about in the map and also for creations inside the outpost, helping with ammo creation especially. Doors and containers can be opened without risk of detection, scans can be sent out by the outpost to find higher tier loot or even the objectives, and power can also be used to salvage to convert items into resources, helping you out with that production. Now while power can be spent on a lot of things, there are a couple of methods that you can use to either offset or give you more power during your runs. The simplest way to solve power woes starts with your outpost, as constructing more capacitors and placing them on your structure grants you a plus 5 max energy per run for each, with seemingly no upper limit to the amount that you can place. Alternatively, you can get lucky with select locations, offering a couple of ways to be able to replace that power that you've spent. One location in the easy zone has a giant battery that you can interact with inside a railcar, allowing you to be able to replace up to 50 energy all at the press of your action key. 
In other randomized locations, you can get lucky and find a battery that can be placed inside your outpost generator, and this will slowly replace 20 spent energy for each one that you find. Great for a little boost and needed to be able to get to that next location. But the main ways that you're going to keep your energy topped up will be around transferring resources into energy. Interacting with your commander view and selecting your generator allows you to turn 150 of your resource into 15 energy, or alternatively, interacting with your main structure, you can then turn 300 resource into 30 energy. Now using one of these transfers will start a cooldown on being able to do it again, so having access to both will speed up your transfers when you need them most. Usually it's fairly easy to get resource in at all, especially on that last extract, so it's best to do this as and when you can get the chance. Now we've briefly mentioned that doors can be opened quietly in the energy section, but we didn't state why that's important. Well, this tip is specifically around doors and other actions in the world like activating terminals to provide boost to your current tour. Doors in this game come in a few varieties, with some just being interactable and open just fine, others requiring a lockpick to gain access, some needing a keycard to be able to bypass, and late, lastly others that require a switch to be used in order to be opened. Now all of these are made clear in game as to which ones they are and all these actions are considered to be quiet, as I'm not drawing in any kind of unwanted attention to them. Now there is one other way that you can open doors, though in most cases, and that's just by blowing it up. That's right, a lot of the doors in this game have varying amounts of hit points, allowing you to just take them down with enough bullets or even damage from explosives. Now, while this does get you inside and maybe to that all-important loot, it does run the risk of being detected and chasers being sent after you, potentially making the mission just that tad bit harder. Deciding if it's worth the risk, though, is part of the fun, and maybe this will help you score some of those hard-to-find legendaries. In the similar space, terminals also run the risk of sending chasers after you, but instead of offering loot, they will give you a modifier on your current run, ranging from free turrets and guardians, to boost for those companions, to attack boost for yourself, or even extra gold at the end of a tour based on the amount of loot that you've extracted out. Now these boosts are usually quite substantial and more than worth the risk of a few chasers hunting you down. Now doing either of these actions don't have a guaranteed chance of summoning chasers, meaning that you might get lucky and just get off scot-free, or you may be able to be unlucky and staring down the barrel of the AI's mechanical dogs. Whichever you choose to do, try to weigh up the risk and the reward before you do the action, as there's no worse feeling in this game than having the hounds on you for nothing at all behind door number one. Inventory space in Outpost when you first start is quite limiting, requiring you to be able to hold your ammo and support items in the exact same space as where you'll be holding all the loot that you plan to extract out, and also those mission crucial items. Now many a time you'll come across that one item that you really need, and have to make a tough call about what to drop and make room for it, but fortunately there is one method to be able to save as a much larger item without having to empty your pockets to carry it. By looking at an item and using your scroll wheel as default, you're able to switch from stashing it in your inventory to instead holding the item in your hands. Now this does put away your weapon, meaning that you have no effective means of being able to fight back with as you do this, but the item can always be dropped and picked up as and when you need to, so you can deal with the threats and carve out a path to your outpost. With this, I highly recommend carrying mission crucial objectives, as not only do you need to keep track of their location to extract out with it, but also they tend to be one of the larger items in this game, taking up the best part of three or four rows of columns. Once you're back at the outpost though, you can drop the item, move some items into the stash, and then look to add the item in once you've made room. So why carry a gun when you can carry loose instead? With the final exfil level on tours, I do have a bunch of tips here, ranging from setups to formations to commander mode choices, but there's possibly too many to go through in this one video, and it's also heavily level dependent due to their mechanics. So if you want some more exfil tips specifically for each of the levels, then let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll get to work on that for you. But specifically, this tip on exfil missions is to handle your resource meter for efficiently. In both the easy and medium difficulty mission tours, and I'm going to assume that it's going to be the same for the other ones as well, the last level requires you to hold down forward positions, set up in front of your outpost, giving you resources to make that fight easier, but also act as checkpoints for the enemy, potentially triggering other methods of them spawning and pushing into your base should they fall. Now holding out for as long as possible here at these forward positions will make that fight easier in the long run, as resources can be turned into power, keeping that ammo production coming, but also can be turned into things like guardians or even other fortifications as the level goes on, giving you access to more defences or ways to even slow down those advances. Now commonly resources are used to make walls to begin with, slowing down enemies on their way as they tend to aggro the obstacles first. 
Alternatively, building towers does give you a damaging attack, but also extends that X-Force field, which provides bonuses to the player while inside, and also extends the buildable area for fortifications. This all being said, forward positions aren't usually crucial to a successful exfil, so if things do start to look bleak, feel free to be able to fall back and lose that position, especially if you've gathered all the resources that you need from that area. I'd recommend any additional towers or turrets that you've gained from completion bonuses or terminals on your tour so far that are placed as far forward as possible, giving you the best defensive line possible. And the best chance at protecting your harvesters, making that fight much easier to win. But with that, it pretty much wraps it up on my top 5 tips for beginners in Outpost Infinity Siege, and ones that will be able to help you get some nice easy completions when it comes to tours. I've already got some great guides coming soon to the channel, helping you to understand mechanics of the game, how to maximise output, so if all of that sounds interesting, make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you can find your way back for more. But this is where I want to be able to hear from you in the comment section down below. What do you think of Outpost Infinity Siege so far? Have you found any legendary loot just yet? And how many nuke silos are you planning on making when it comes to that endgame? Let me know all that and more down below. Thank you for making your way to the end of the video. And as I always say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well. And I'll see you all on the next video.